the pirates. this jungle trek is over, I can hold you forever. But it's taking so long, Jim. Why didn't you bring your half of the map with you? Why well, did, silly? <laughs> I've just been telling Jack I hid it in the jungle to keep him in line. It's right here. Jack would be glad to know that. Yes, he... What is it, Babby? Why, well, Jack, I thought... No, Jack! No! You. Call the airport. Give me the Hong Kong airport, please. Hong Kong airport. When is the next flight to Tan San, please? At 13 hours, 10 minutes, madam. In two hours, 20 minutes, Jack. Perfect. That'll give us time to get rid of this. We'd like two reservations on the next flight, please, to Mr. Randall. Two reservations, Air Cathay, Flight Lee today. Uh, Air Cathay, Flight Lee. Yes, madam. Ask him if that's Terry Lee, who flew with the Far East Fighter Command. Is that the Terry Lee who flew with the Far East Fighter Command? Yes, madam. Thank you. Terry Lee. Well, perhaps that's just the way it should be. Get the porter, darling. Give me the porter, please. You're worried, doll. Yes, I am. About Jim Fletcher. His body, you mean. Well, you can stop worrying. Only a deep sea diver will ever find it. His pilot, Lee. Did he know Jim Fletcher, too? Yes. Well, I can handle that. Just remember that you never saw Fletcher. All you know is that he was my assistant out here during the war, and I loved him like a brother. Oh, one more thing. Play up to Terry Lee. <laughs> the wing tanks, Chaz. Wing tanks? We're on them, chump. Since I have now done all the heavy manual labor, let's go to topic A, namely the beauteous creature in the caboose of this flying wastebasket. I only have eyes for my work, pal. You also have a careless way with the truth. You know, this girl is passing fair. She is. This girl is provocatively formed. She is. This girl is alluring. She is. Ottawa is the capital of Canada. That is correct. You may now sit down, Master Charles. Look, I don't know this girl, but the guy with her is quite a guy. Randall. Jack Randall. Did a lot of civilian contracting out here during the war. Oh, yeah, of him I've heard. Flip Corkin and I flew a lot of stuff to him in the jungle. Wonder what he's doing out here with a passion flower like that. Could be his wife. There's evidence against it. What evidence? Well, he wouldn't let her carry the luggage, and he helped her aboard the plane. What a husband you're going to make. Better make talk to Chops and tell him it won't be long. She really is his wife. Flight lead to Tansan Airport. Flight lead to Air Cathay. Flight lead to Air Cathay. Come in, please. Over. Air Cathay, go ahead, flight lead. Over. We're on uh, course, on schedule, and on the ball. Tell Chops, will you? Over. Check, I'll tell him. Over and out. Aye, I would have clobbered those bookies if I would have been at Arlington Park today. Four straight long shots in a row. 
That racing form's three months old. So it's three months old. A guy can make mine bets, can't he? That's the only kind you can win anyway. Terry and Hotshot just checked. They're on schedule. Uh, they're always on time. If the rest of you pilots flew the way they did, I'd be a millionaire by now. Uh, I've got to lamb out of here. I've got a date. A date, Chopstick? Sure. Dames, go for me. This one's with the dragon lady, and that's money in the bank. See you around. I agree, Taiwan. If Chopstick Joe dared, he would cheat me as he does the others. But he does not dare. And this new scheme he brings you, there is profit in it? You are naive, Taiwan. Chopstick does not involve himself in affairs without profit. If that is Chopstick, permit him to enter. I will see no other. Put down that stutter gun, you dope. Watch out who you're calling a dope. I can speak English better than you can. Oh, a wise guy. Tell the dragon lady that Chopstick Joe She's is... expecting you, and she can have you. Go on, I'll have her chop your ears off. You are most welcome to my humble abode. A palace fit for emperors. My lowly presence contaminates its beauty. You have a matter you wish to discuss with me? Do you remember Mr. Randall? The engineer? He and his assistant, Fletcher, got away with a bundle of stuff when they raided those jungle temples. So I have always believed. And they left all those uncut stones and the rest of the loot behind in the jungle. Then I doubt if it was ever found. The jungle changes so. There is a map, a good one, made by Fletcher, and he's an engineer. How has all this information come to you? Uh, Fletcher contacted me. He's not satisfied with the cut that Randall's going to give him. I see. A double cross, we call it in Chicago, USA. Why do you come to me with all this? If you can unload the pretty stones, I'll give Fletcher the double cross and take the loot away from both of them. But why at this time? Fletcher and Randall are flying here today from Hong Kong. They should be in by now. Said they'd be here as soon as they checked out their cargo. Now remember this, Babby. Insist that Terry Lee pilot the plane. We're probably stuck with that co-pilot too. Watch out, Charlie. He'll go along with anything Lee accepts. But why Lee? I don't think he's anyone to fool around with. Those quiet ones never are. Well, he's smart enough, but he still thinks of me as a reliable engineer and contractor. He won't be suspicious. And we leave him in Kangta. We leave him in Kangta. Is there really as much as you say there is? Abby, darling, the gems from a dozen temples are in that pit. Diamonds like walnuts. Emeralds that burn with a cold green glare. Translucent jade bracelets carved by finer artisans than Cellini. How much is it worth? Seven, eight hundred thousand dollars. A million, probably, if it's shrewdly marketed. But, Jack, if we kill the pilots, are you sure we can get out? Why do you think I've spent every available hour in the air for the past two years? Of course we'll get out. And we'll claim that while you and I were away from camp looking for the ore vein I once discovered, they were killed by gorillas. Why don't you fly in yourself and forget about me? Impossible. I could never get the proper clearances. And I don't want to arouse the slightest suspicion. Careful, here they are. Hello. Jack. Sit down. Hi. Drake. See if you don't mind. I too will slosh around in a peeker or two of the native brew while I bask in the beauty of Mrs. Randall. Hey, if you don't object. Oh, go right ahead, Hotshot. If I were the jealous type, I'd have cut my throat long ago. <laughs> Waiter. Tea. Terry, I want to ask a favor. Anything I can do, Jack, you know that. Well, it's a mining venture. A mining stock deal here in the Orient? No, I'm not selling stock. Here's the situation. I'll have Tommy Wong fly them into the jungle. On the way out, he'll phony up a forced landing at the old airstrip near Bangator. Then I'll take them there. Are you certain this can be done? It cannot fail. However, there is one other way. 
I've had a man tailing Randall ever since Fletcher first contacted me. Uh, Fletcher says Randall has the map. If my man can get it, then you and I will fly in and grab the loot ourselves. You sure this isn't just a mining engineer's dream, Jack? There's gold in that jungle river, that Terry. And I think enough of our friendship to see that you and your co-pilot will participate. Only gold? Why can't it be oil? I'll always be a frustrated pedal and stick man until I own a clutch of oil wells. As chief pilot of Air Cathay, I can charter you a plane and pilot. But uh, I'm trying to think who'd make the best man to stick for you. Oh, Captain Lee, you must pilot us in yourself. I wouldn't think of entering that horrid jungle without you. And if Captain Lee doesn't rise and salute you, I will beat him on the hour, every hour, until he barks like a fox, every bark meaning, yeah. <laughs> I'll add my insistence, Terry. As a... As a matter of fact, that's why I came here. I'd be afraid to trust just anybody. Well, I guess we can get him up there and back, can't we, Chaz? With Mrs. Randall's eyes upon me, I can fly her to Mars. Now, coming back's another matter. Call me Babby. Okay, baby. I'll ask one more favor, Terry. Keep this until I ask for it, will you? I don't think I understand. Well, let's say I've made some enemies here in the Orient, and I'll feel better if you have that envelope. Well, as you like. Now, if excuse us, we'll make sure. the necessary field arrangements. And thank you so much for agreeing to fly us. Oh, you try and stop us. Jack, what is it? I'm not sure, yet. Did you really give Lee the map? No. There's my half of the map. Fletcher's. What did you give Lee? Some old hotel bills and a travel folder. What on earth for? I wanted to see what that half cast at the next table would do if he saw me give Lee something of apparent importance. You mean that man who just went out? What's he got to do with it? I saw him in Hong Kong, and I had the idea there he was following me. Jack, are you sure? When you leave a trail of dead men behind you, Babby, you have to be sure about everything. Captain Lee, one moment, please. Take the envelope given you by Mr. Randall, please. And if I refuse? You will not be so foolish. I have killed other men. That I can believe. <laughs> Captain Lee, you have any trouble? Looks like it, Chuck. You and Hotter Tolly make pretty good box fight. And not good. Not good for bandit fellow like Sabo. Uh, he run chop chop out of alley. And we'll go chop chop back to the field, Chuck. Thanks for saving our lives, Chuck. We'll tell your boss you're the best dog on cop in Tan Sand. And should get the Tan Sand equivalent of the Medal of Honor. Chuck, don't know what you're talking about. But sound very good. <laughs> so long, Chung. Ooh, ouch. One of those celestial gentlemen donated a five-star thumb in my button. Hope he did as well. Well, why don't you open that thing and see what's inside? Randall wanted us to know he wouldn't have made a point of sealing it in front of us. But I will ask him. You know, maybe this isn't going to be just a routine flight into the jungle after all. Oh, not with Mrs. Randall aboard, it isn't. Oh, come on, what's bothering you? Well, for one thing, the way Chops beef when I told him we agreed to take the flight. Chops is always beefing. Although it did seem kind of upset. He kept referring to Mrs. Randall as Mrs. Fletcher about half the time. Seems like he was expecting Mr. Fletcher. What's with this Fletcher? He was Randall's partner. Nice guy. They were very close friends. What was it Randall said about him? When? 
You know. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. When I was, when he was telling me about the gold discovery, he said, "Too bad Fletch can't share in this. Something must have happened to Fletcher. Something might happen to us. That knuckle and elbow festival in the alley was bad for us here." Yeah, that still puzzles me. See ya. See ya, chum. Oh, you doll. Chops, I want to give you this for safekeeping till I see Randall again. Chops, safekeeping? What? I have no curiosity about this deal. Take it or leave it. No difference. Look, Joe, will you promise to keep out of this envelope? I take an oath on my ancestors, my most worthy and illustrious... Well, that's better than no oath at all. Yeah, we'll have to chance it. I'm not going to pack this thing around with me. I'll put it in the safe. Okay. Hi, Chops. Randall's on his way over to sign up for that charter flight. Uh, I'll take the envelope now. One moment till I add up these figures. Uh, things are picking up. We almost broke even this month. Yeah, the envelope. The envelope, you know, the one I want to give to Randall. Oh, that, I have it right here. I thought you were going to lock it in a safe. Oh, safe did not agree. Could not get it open. You know, I think you're reforming, Chops. To the best of my untutored knowledge, you haven't been inside this envelope. I told you I had no curiosity about that Randall bum. Thanks, Jack. Still want me to keep this? I see no point in it now. When I gave it to you, I didn't think it would endanger your life. No harm done, really. But naturally, I'm curious. Mind telling me what's in it? Oh, certainly not. It's a map of my gold discovery. I told you I had enemies, and I suspected that half-caste in the cafe. Since he obviously knows about the map, there's no point in involving you further. But you will keep our destination a secret, won't you? Certainly, Jack. I'll give this a chopstick. It's no accident that half-caste is here in Tan San. That's what I wanted to find out. I'm worried, Jack. I'm not. Oops! Oh, hi! Hi, Archer. I've been checking the weather. We're all right. Oh, here's the mail from Hong Kong. Yeah, better check see if we have enough drum gas. We'd hate to get caught up in that jungle without enough petrol. I'll get on that right now. Hot shot! Don't, don't yell like that! Come here! Look at this. Jim Fletcher, wartime engineer, found murdered in Hong Kong Bay. Former partner of Jack Randall had been shot through the body. A wardrobe trunk found today in the foul fishing net of a harbor sampan disclosed the body of James T. Fletcher, one-time partner of the famous Jack Randall. Fletcher had been shot through the chest by a small caliber pistol. Police admit there are practically no clues as to who might have perpetrated the crime. Randall says he hasn't seen Fletcher in nearly two years. I keep coming back to that. That's what the man said. He claimed Fletcher was rattling around somewhere out here in the Orient, but he couldn't locate him. You didn't mention Fletcher's murder. No. That might be a good thing for us to know and not let Randall know we know. Oh, you're unique, Terrence, my lad, a no-man. What do you take for that Randall gold mining stock? Think of a good offer while I go back and talk out of landing. Take over. Roger. Not far from Kang's house, Jack. Yes, I know. I'll show you a good place to land. It's rough, but adequate. Make a good campsite, too. Fine. Come on up to the Alice and drag us in. Right back. Jack. Let it go, I tell you. We're about to lay our hands on a million and you fuss with a camp stone. All right, but what about Terry and Hotshot? They're making some adjustment on that fool plane. Good, it'll keep them busy. Let's get going.
You're following the old trail down to the dry riverbed. Uh-huh. Jack, I thought I heard an airplane. You and your imagination. You'll be hearing taxi horns next. I wish I could. Okay, let's go look at our gold mine. This is it. What's in it will probably approximate a good gold mine. Let's take it with us now. No. I want Terry and Hotshot out of the way first. We'll tell them I found the ore vein and bring them back here, where they'll stay. I remember some things now, such as looted temples. Randall always blamed it on the enemy. Mr. Randall deserves all the praise he's received. Mr. Randall is an extremely smart man. Thank you, Hotshot. Come with me, please. Vandal might have shot me. Well, fly boys. Just like Chicago. I could have told you this Randall was a bum the moment I saw him. I might have known you two would be interested in a prize as rich as Randall's. Only in seeing that the jewels are returned to my people. That's a switch. Perhaps our disposal should be left to the authorities. By all means. She's on the level. Captain Lee. There is another reason for my presence here. Perhaps someday you will understand. Quiet, coming, Bob. Quiet. Chops is composing a literary masterpiece. Joy Ken. What did he say, Terry? Can you understand his dialect? He said, see you again. Ho Pung Yo. When illustrious friends Ding hop. gather for Ding Jai. further exciting adventures of further exciting adventures of Terry and, and the, the Pirates. Be with us again the next time we take off with Terry and the Pirates in another exciting high altitude adventure.